Hi everybody, I'm early. But a couple people were looking, so I'm just getting going a little early. We can just chat. I won't start until one. So I'm just putting the post onto Facebook. My stepmom needs to go live today. I was helping her try to figure out the streaming. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mixed reviews on my haircut, but I don't care. I had fun <laughs> chopping away at it. Gave me something to do. You guys can hear me okay? I can't hear myself, which I guess is normal. Hi, wow, from Chile. That's amazing. Nevada. Hi, everybody. Um, we're not really supposed to start until 1, so at some point, um, either Kyla's going to call or I'm going to call Kyla, but until then, it's just me. And, okay, good. And I also did not totally finish my goldfish, so I might just sit here and stab at that for a few minutes. I wanted to look up a goldfish picture. Because I feel like I didn't quite get this one as cute as usual. Let's look at some images. I like the big-eyed ones. I don't know what they're called. Yeah, they crack me up. All right, so sometimes they have two fins on the bottom and one fin on the top. So that's how I'll do the next one. But I want to practice something. Yay! Welcome, everybody. So, have you guys, and you can just comment, or, well, just comment. <laughs> Guess is the way to go. Has Have you guys made these before? Or is this, like, we're going to do this for the first time today? I'm going to make a little kind of ombre here. Uh-oh, some Spanish. I need Kyla. Hola, Sarah. Yes, my cell phone is charged. You're not late. <laughs> I'm early. What happened was I opened up because I was helping patients with something and I didn't start streaming, but for some reason, like people were joining the video and then one person asked um, where, where we were because it was past 1230. And then I questioned uh, the timing that I have put. Anyway, so I started at 1245. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, good. This is going to be fun. Oh, who's from Israel? Hello. Hello. So you are very early. We're early. We can just I was like, "What?" I know. We can just hang and chat a little bit. I'm not I'm not starting anything. I'm actually um finishing the one that I made. Oh. Because when I saw I opened it up and saw you working, I was like, "Don't." I think I'm really late. <laughs> You're good. You're good. I'm making a, like a fin pelt. Oh, cool. Yeah, we'll see. Hi, 
everybody. Can everybody hear Kyla? Yeah. Yeah. Good. I, like, kind of didn't know it was Easter. I mean, I sort of knew, but, like, so now I'm trying to decide what do I do. I think we're just going to bake. I don't think okay. I'm. I don't think I'm gonna go buy candy and stuff because what I have been doing for the boys who are now 14 and 16, by the way, is like a gift, you know. And then I always like going to like um, a place like Marshalls or like to get like yeah. some kind of special chocolates, you know, like not just grocery store chocolate. So, um, but I didn't uh, do that this year. So I, eight, hear, uh, I ordered a little bit in a grocery delivery. Oh, good. Um, like gummy bears and some peanut M and M's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was available. That was about all that was available. But Matthew wanted some airsoft stuff, so we ordered that last week. Yeah. And Andrew really wanted a cactus. And there's, um, I don't know if you remember that person I showed you on Facebook that yep. does. Like the succulents and Succulent stuff? stuff mm -hmm. Yeah, she's right around the corner, actually. So I messaged her yesterday, and she had some stuff at her house. So we got a whole box of fun stuff to put together. So Nice. That's awesome. Totally not normal. They're not going to be an Easter basket in our world. No, but, but just that kind of, like, fun stuff to do together. Yeah, so. like something else instead. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, I think my Amy, my sister, wanted, um, was trying to find a recipe that was my grandmother's. So that had me looking through my grandmother's oh, cool. recipe box. So I think Evan and I are going to do some, some baking from, from there. Okay, yeah. that's fun. Yeah. All right, well, I'll, I'll fuss with that a little bit. But he's a little, like, goofy looking. Not that's, like, that's the best part of the goldfish. Maybe not in a good way, though. Like, maybe in a... <laughs> I don't know. I had not made one in a really long time, so I was sort of... And I was rushing. I don't know what I was... I was here doing something else. Well, he'll just sit there and be a part. Oh, good. Tea. I've got tea, too. Oh, do you have it? I do. I actually was prepared. Nice. Does anyone have any um, questions before we start? Because we, I want to wait um, another four or five minutes just because I started a little bit early. Well, patience is very interested in the fact that you have grandma's recipe box. Apparently. I do. <laughs> I do. Yep. It, there's about, I think she has about a dozen sponge cake recipes in there. I'm pretty sure they're all the same one, except they vary from eight eggs to 12 eggs <laughs> or 11. <laughs> so my grandma used to make something she called the 11 egg cake. Um, but it was just a really yummy, like butter sponge cake. Wow. Yeah, and um, Evan has already claimed it. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, but I should take the time to type some of these things out and share them, which we did with my mom's mom's recipes, but that's because my mom's mom already had them all typed out, <laughs> so we just yeah. made copies. But my dad's mom's are um, just handwritten on index cards. I love that though. I love yeah. the, having the handwriting. Yeah, it's neat, and it's neat how each generation sort of seems to have their handwriting. Like I feel like you can recognize like 1940s handwriting. You know what I mean? Right, right. Oh yeah, yeah. Joyce is saying she sold all of her fishes. The goldfish are like. They're special, and I had fun watching the video again, because sometimes, you know, we make a project, and then I don't make it for a long time. Like the snails, I was working on a snail, because that's what we're going to do next. 
And I don't think I watched that video ever. So it was funny to watch it. Like we made it yeah. and then I, you I know what I mean? I don't remember anything. I, I kept mean, I it. And there's certain parts that I edit over and over again. Yeah. So they're, they're like stuck in my mind to try to get just the right timing or whatever. But <laughs> So they're stuck um, in your mind. But yeah, Kyla. but only pieces. But like people will comment like, oh, that's such and such a joke. And I'm like, no memory. <laughs> I was so out of it. Like, I don't know where I was, but we we didn't know what their little protrusions were called. Like, where their uh, eyeballs yeah. are. And, and, and you looked it up, and you said they were called tentacles. And, like, probably, like, ten times I had to ask you what they were called. Um, so I was making a snail, and I was looking at pictures and stuff online. And I was like, you know what? This wet felted would be so much fun. So that's what I want to do. And so I think what we'll do is you need, if you don't have a wet felting kit, whether it's the mini or the large one, you need some bubble wrap. You need two pieces of bubble wrap or some bubble wrap and like a piece of wall or, um, like acrylic netting or kind of anything in between there. And because we're, we're going to make basically two shapes, we're going to make a cone shape that's going to become the shell. And then we're going to make a, um, um, like a body skin that's going to make the body. And a lot of the land snails have like this real kind of flappy, almost that looks like something out of the ocean. Um, so it's, I think it's going to be really fun. I'm going to try and make one beforehand so that I know what the heck I'm talking about. Yay! Um, oh, someone said to photocopy the handwritten cards and then just put them into spiral mount. Yeah. <laughs> so, the goldfish, I have not been as adventurous as many in the coloring because... Oh, yeah. Yeah. So when we put the goldfish video out, we saw so many beautiful colors, purples, um, teals, all kinds of different colors. So I'm hoping that you all have been able to find, um, at least you just need core wool that coordinates. So something in the same family as the top coat that you're using. And then... For the top coat, it can be a bat, it can be um, merino, it can be the um, you know this the set of of forty type color top coat colors that we carry. Um, I've got some of the duck fluff here. It doesn't take a ton of fiber either. It doesn't take a ton of fiber. I've got yolk. I've got the. Um, I think this is papaya from the candies collection. Um, I've got some, I did pull out some silk. I think I'll play with this. I love aqua and gold together. So I might play with a little bit of the aqua this time. But, it, and it just takes such a small amount too. But the core wool is, you need just for, for making the shapes. Um, Oh, someone said you sound like you're in a goldfish bowl. I'm trying to put it. No, I had my cell phone speaker. I think last okay. time I um, held the phone up to my ear the whole okay. time. So I was oh. trying speaker, but okay. it, I does, have it back up to my it, ear. It does make a difference, I think. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we need to get you a headset. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You hear everything happening in my house. <laughs> okay, so welcome, everybody. I was I was on a little bit early, and we were just... Just chit chatting. So um, let's see, get this out of here. Over here. Okay. So uh, to get started, you need a craft stick or a pipe cleaner. These are usually 12 inches. So if you don't have one of these and you have, you know, floral wire or. Um, <coughs> Or any other kind of not too strong wire. I'm I'm using 12 inches. 
So I'm going to find the center and give the center a little pinch. And then about three inches, so that would be halfway, basically. Um, I'm going to twist the two wires to, together about three three times. And then I'm going to open that loop up into a square. So that's your, your goldfish start. <laughs> Very simple. And These then, are a great beginner project. This is a great beginner really. project. It's so fun. And then I'm going to fold the very tips, tail tips of the pipe cleaner back because I don't want that pokiness um, sticking straight out. And um, and you could decide if you want maybe the top fin longer and the bottom fin a little shorter, you could fold the bottom wire back a little farther. But once you get into making these, um, you're going to make them all different kinds of ways. And it's really fun. Oh, thank you for the hair compliments. I was, um, I was a little unsure. <laughs> it's always, always nice to hear. So funny. Know, you're so like, it, cut my hair. It's gone. It is gone. Well, first I just cut it like with scissors kind of into a, like a, a shaggy pixie. And then I realized, I couldn't see the back and it's probably like crazy uneven. So then I, I took the clippers because I was like, the clippers will get it. That was bold. It was fun. It looks cute. Thank you. Okay. That's it. Piece of cake. There's your shape. Um, I think I worked with off-white chunky core on this one. Um, but I think I'm going to work with yellow. So this is a chick yellow. So first we want a three inch piece that we're gonna split in half and just wrap these, I'm gonna stretch it out a little. And we just wanna wrap these, these tail, tail wires. I usually go around that body twist to anchor it once. And I don't need to go out and back. I'm just trying to gauge my fiber so that I end up just going out. This doesn't have to be super skinny or anything like that, but you do want it tight. It's to get some wool on there so that when we put the fins on, it's got something to felt into and hold it on there. And on the end, I don't mind if there's a little kind of floof sticking off, which is something I usually try to avoid. But in this case, it just adds, adds to it so that little fringy fiber sticking off is no big deal. I might not need quite so much on this second piece. <laughs> it does feel good to have no hair. Something about it. Well, I had watched Unorthodox, which was about a, a young woman who left um, the Hasidic community in Brooklyn. One, from what I understood from the film, a particularly strict, I mean, they're, all, they're strict. Anyway, so one of the things that women do is wear wigs <clears throat> because, ah. so then she decides to leave and venture out into the world and she just has her like shaved head and she was super cute and I was like, I'm going to have a shaved head too. That's the way I do things sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now that these are wrapped, uh, um, we're going to wrap the body. And I love working on this square di or diamond shape because it lends itself to being able to wrap. You're going to want to split that in quarters. Um, but this is not, so I'm just splitting it in half. And I always stretch my fiber out to make sure um, it's nice and smooth. Okay, so if I'm down at this quadrant, 
I'm going to go across and then I can go straight down. So I went across, now I can go down and then across again. And then down and then across again. So you just keep hitting those um, angles and crossing over. And I use both, both pieces of wool. I might even need a third one. I think the phone on the Is that bad? Right. Okay. I don't know where to put you. I was trying to, okay, how's that, better? Sure. Sing for us, Kyla. No. <laughs> <laughs> so this one, maybe I'll go, oh wait, now it ends up being the same direction. I was like, maybe I'll go a different way, but it, it's all the same. All right, that's probably good. I think sometimes they, they end up huge because I keep adding and adding. So you're not stabbing between wraps there? I didn't. Just... I didn't. I mean, if, if you're just wrapping more, then and everything's holding on, like, my stab it is all snail polluted. You guys know the scissor trick? Who told us the scissor trick? Somebody told us, and I don't remember the who. Trick. Yeah, just taking the um, the handle of the scissors is rubbery, so it gets the stuff out of it. Oh yeah, yeah. <gasps> you guys, I just put it in my tea. That's terrible. <laughs> it's fine. Totally fine. Okay. Okay. So there's my little fish. Little fishy, fishy. That was one of my favorites on Sesame Street when Ernie called the fish into the boat. So I watched the goldfish video too, and you had a lot of goldfish jokes, Kyla. I think there probably were. I was thinking about that. <laughs> okay. So we want two belly shapes, and I believe the wide part of the Zuli tool will work well for that. So I'm going to take a six inch piece, split it in half. If you don't have the Zuli tool, you could fold in your fingers, just fold a one inch pillow. But if you do, you can wrap around here. The Zuli tool is going to make it a little more, a little more square. Folding it in your hands is going to make it a little more um, rectangular. And they go. They so if you're obviously you can tell which way my fish is facing. They go in this bottom, on this bottom quadrant, sort of like stuck to the sides, but you want it to hang over over a little bit because their little bellies hang down a little bit. So I'll just stick this on and show you how it's, it's just hanging below the bottom of the wire portion. So somebody asked when the um, Bumblebee supply pack would be available. <laughs> Oh, I can't remember. Did Sassy make some already? I think Marcia dyed some locks. Yes. But I don't yes. know. Yes. I don't know what that. Yeah. Where that fits and everything. It's hard for us to say anything right now, like our timing on stuff. Um, partly because we're not here working yet, and partly because. Um, supplies and getting things has changed so I, I hope not too long you know I just I just can't it's it's definitely high on the uh, once we return agenda it yeah, should be, oh yeah. yeah it would be out by now probably mm -hmm. definitely would have been all right so we have two bellies so now we need to make two um, bumps for the eyes. 
So I'm going to take a 3 inch piece, split it in half, and wrap the round part of the Zuli tool just in one place. So you're making like a little bean. Sorry. It's all right. So I guess I gotta get my dogs inside. Oh, someone said they have never felt it. You just you, you just gotta jump in because once you start handling the wool and. Um, learning all about fiber and the stabbing and it's just it's so much fun so i really encourage beginners just to start somewhere because there's so much to do and learn and it does take a little bit of time to learn but you're going to enjoy you're going to enjoy it um and some of the projects like the goldfish um we, we have a lot of beginner projects that are just very beginner friendly like the pocket gnomes you're just going to have fun with it so you got to start somewhere. Okay. So um, we are going to take these little eye bumps and as much as possible, try to felt them round. So that means I'm going to stab at the edges to try to make it a little bit round. I don't want to flatten it out, in other words. I want it to be a great big bump. The direction that you stab is so important in your sculpture. <clears throat> I think that was the problem with my other one. I feel like the eyes got too far apart. Is that Finley? That's Finley. There's so stuff now happening outside in here. So now he's got belly bumps and eye bumps. Everybody have their have their eye bumps on. <clears throat> so on Serafina Fiber Art, I've been linking a page called Time Tap, and it's uh, the link looks like Serafina .time -tap .com or something like that, and um, it's a it's a scheduler. So when you go to Time Tap it's going to have a little box that says welcome and then you click next and then it says zoom because that's the meeting um, format that I'm using. Then you click next and then it says me because I'm the only one who's teaching and then you click next and then it has a, um, a list of offerings. So I have a 20 minute and a 45 minute one on one. Um, I, I have a armature class on Monday that's full, but I just put a fiber class um, for Friday that's halfway full <clears throat> and right now I have a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time but I'll just keep putting classes and availability on there and then once you pick which thing you want to do um, it connects you to PayPal and then in the one-on-ones the idea is <clears throat> to just answer your specific questions or help you with your specific project like let's say you're leaping into something that um, that you need some help figuring out the armature or um, you have fiber questions. That's sort of however you want to spend your time. And then the classes, right now the format is an hour and um, I'm going to do an overview but then also have leave time for one-on-one -on -one questions. So that's there um, also. Okay, our eyes are on. And now we're going to make three ghosts. And the ghosts are going to be the lower lip, the little like sticky uppy pouty fish lip. And then the other two 
are going to stick off. The rounded ghost part will stick off and they'll be the, um, I don't even know what that's called. Let me look at my picture. It's like, it's not the gill exactly. It's just this little weird thing that they have. <laughs> I should know. Maybe it is where their gills are behind that flap. Okay. So I'm going to take um, three kind of one inch squares of core. Well, they're more like one and a half, I'd say. And then if I want to tone this with a top coat, I can do that. So I think I'm going to use this vibrant yellow for this one. So I'm just putting a same kind of size, but real thin layer of top coat. This coloring is meant to just like basically paint it or color it, not add a lot of bulk. So then we flip these over because we need the pretty color to end up on the right side. And then usually when I make a ghost, I draw a center line. And then I want to make my ghost or kind of rainbow shape. I want to set it back from the top edge because if I put it on the, if I start the half circle on the very top edge, it's going to make a really wimpy edge. But if I start it a half an inch down from that, so I'm going to say this is about the size of like the bigger, a little bigger than a quarter, this, this circle I'm making. Now this fiber that is left at the top gets folded into it. So now it has a little bit of bulk rather than it being all flimsy. And then whenever you're felting directly um, into your felting surface, you, you need to pick it up once in a while. But that's kind of the, the size. So here I'll show you relative to the Zuli tool. Um, how wide it is. But I can further like stab and shape that. If it got too pointy, I can make it rounder. I can I can kind of pull the fibers in and tighten it up, make it a little smaller. Thin or the gill cover. Gill cover sounds right to me. And then we have here's a fun fish word, the bit that connects the body. I'm making is too pointy. So I'm gonna pull it off and then I'm really gonna stab that and back in on itself to round it out. This is a good job for the um, the punch tool because the the ends of these need to hold their hold their shape. I'm just gonna start saying peduncle as like a it's a good one <laughs> as like shucks. Would Coriadale work as a top coat? Sure. It just might be, might be long. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's, you know, Corydale, it is long, usually. It can be so many different things. It's long and it can be a little wiry. But sometimes it's not. I don't know. It's all over the place. Alrighty, so looking at my three ghosts, I might find the two that are most the same <clears throat> and then use the third one for the lip. So I think I'll put the lip first. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm going to put the lip first. I'm going to have it kind of sticking up off the end here. So he's got a real pout going on. And the fringe is your blender that goes back onto the body. I just got a text from Evan that he made cookies. Oh, he's already baking. Yeah. A cookie monster. And then these two, if you need to, you might like kind of pull some of this extra fiber away that's in this, you know, the butt of the ghost. And then the fringe, you want to um, kind of start to work around the eye bump and then some of it's gonna go onto that lip piece we just put on. But the idea is that those stick off just a little bit um, between the eye and the belly, and it's at about a 45 degree angle. So it's not pointing straight down, and it's not pointing straight back. It's at an angle between the eye and the belly. Someone said it looks like a frog. At this yeah. moment, it kinda <laughs> does. Definitely. So whenever we make a ghost shape, the fringe is what <laughs> funny. That holds it on. Someone's saying their ghosts are way too big. Okay. I think a lot of the time shapes end up if your ghosts, too big and then they all everything ends up gigantic. Yeah. If your ghosts are too big, you hold the end, you pull away the wool from the other end, and then you can put this down and re-stab that to tighten it up and make it smaller. So I keep putting the same side down so my all my fiber that folded in is on top, and then you can keep kind of tugging that in to make it the size you want it to be. What are ghosts? Okay, did... <laughs> Okay. The ghost shape is the three, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to Randy, is the three shapes that we just made. So did she, was that not seen maybe? Um, I mean, I guess not being over the shoulder, it's a little bit harder yeah. to so see, but we took, please show us again the eyes and the ghost things. Okay. Um, the ghosts were about one and a half inch squares of core with some pretty top coat on top of it. Whatever color you want to tone your fish. So I just put like a brighter yellow. So to make a ghost, I'm flipping it over so the pretty colors on the bottom. I'm stabbing a line straight up and down the center, my fibers going side to side. And then um, I'm drawing a half circle or like a ghost. Like a Pac-Man, yeah. Like, like a Pac-Man Pac ghost. ghost, yeah. Then I'm folding the top down into that and then the sides so that it takes that shape and you felt it. And so these three um, ghost pieces that we made. One's the, the lower lip and two are the, oh, what did we say they were called? Gill cover? Gill cover flaps. Pectoral fins, maybe? I'm I think sure. I don't the know pectoral fins are the ones that come off the belly, but oh, I, gotcha. I could be wrong. I'm, I'm just um, I'm definitely not in no And then the placement, one more time on the fish. Yeah, the placement is between the eye and the belly at a 45 degree angle. So not not straight down, not straight back, but at a 45. 
So if you're, you know, if you're not quite keeping up or something's confusing, the goldfish tutorial that's on YouTube, like, or on our website, um, is, is very thorough. We really, um, since it's a beginner, beginner tutorial, um, we went through everything pretty detailed on there. So you could follow up on there. All right. So it's pretty, it's pretty, you know, we made two belly bumps, we made two eye bumps, and we made three ghosts. So now we're going to make three double decker tacos. <laughs> Such a useful shape. So if I, um, I'm trying to think if I did this with four, I'll do it with some four. So if I take about a three inch length of my, um, of my yellow core and then split it into thirds, essentially trying to make three equal parts here. And, and you then, definitely do not want too much. Yeah. You don't want too much for this. I'm going to try and stretch this out, um, into about, um, like a half an inch wide. Oh, no, that's more like an inch wide. Three quarters. Go for three quarters because it'll stretch out more. Okay, same thing. I want to put a little bit of the top coat on top of these. So I'm just matching it up. These are vertical. The fiber is going vertically. When we made the ghosts, we put the fiber horizontally. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty, this yellow. Okay, double decker taco, super useful. Regular taco is just a piece of fiber, a, a, a chunk of fiber folded in half. That's your taco. Um, sometimes we put a little noodle in it if we need that to be particularly strong. The double decker is like, kind of like when you fold a piece of paper into thirds to put it into an envelope, um, except I'm gonna felt just not quite in the middle, like a third of the way down and fold that over. And then I'm gonna felt an area, whatever thickness I want, depending on what it's gonna be. In this case, we're gonna felt about a half an inch of an area. And then we're going to fold that up. So now I've folded it twice. So I have this kind of nice, chunky, bold, um, rolled end, but I still have a fringy end for attaching. So I'll show you, I'll show you step by step um, with these pieces. And I'll show you where they go to so, so that you know. OK. So I've got about three inches here, about an inch and a half or so down. I'm going to felt across, a line across. I'm going to fold that down, felt about a half inch area, like the whole half an inch, not just a line. And then I'm going to fold that up. And then I'm going to felt that half inch area again. So you, okay, you do slip it over. So now I have a rolled edge and I have a fringy edge. So we do that three times. Belt to line across, fold that down, belt a half inch area, fold that up, felt it. Robin is telling us that it's called the operculum. Ooh. The hard plate like bony flap that covers the gills. Yes, the operculum. Put that you know, in there with the pen, pen, panda wanda, whatever was that? What's that other word? The penduncular. I don't know. Penduncular. <laughs> what was it? The peduncle. Peduncle. The peduncle. That was what it was. Oh boy, I'm not going to remember these at all. All right. Three double decker tacos. 
Okay, one's gonna be your lip, your upper lip, <laughs> which is really fun because you can give them an expression. And then the other two go around the eye. Do, 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 do. I'm getting yellow eyes this time. Okay. Okay. So same thing. Find two that are, if they're different, that are the same. And then the third one is going to be your lip. So this is where it gets kind of fun because they'll all start to look different. But the fringe goes up the head. And I kind of like having the upper lip come down over the low, sides of the lower lip a little bit. Gives them kind of that um, angry uh, catfish look. So there's his lips on. <laughs> oh my gosh, five week quarantine in Norway by yourself. Hang in there, hang in there. <laughs> now everybody's going crazy. Mm. Jason said they're playing the video while they eat lunch. And your dad mm. got all teary and said, if only grandmom and dad could see Sarah now, Aww. I mean, even the name Serafina, he would be so proud. Serafina is what my dad's dad used to call me, among other things. <laughs> Malandrina, which means bad little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm, lunch. Dad, I want your lunch. Alright, so the other two double-decker tacos, you try to wrap around the eyeball. So you might have to stretch them out a little bit. But I try to sort of like get them to meet. The fringe... Okay, the fringe is going to go fan out onto the fish. The rolled edge is going to go around that eye bump, just leaving a little bit of space. I feel like I didn't make these quite big enough, or my eye bump is huge. Um, so I'm really kind of jamming it around there, squeezing the eye bump in there. I'll hold it up for you in one second because it's hard to explain what it's doing. I'll show you. I feel like this is the trickiest part of the whole fish. This is the trickiest part. Although a lot of people ended up with their opiculums, whatever it's called, <laughs> too big. That was another tricky part. Okay. Opiculum, you got it very close. <laughs> There's no double decker taco eyeball. There's the eyeball with the double decker taco around it. Leftover homemade sourdough pizza. Yum. I'm so hungry. So I've been sleeping a little later, especially this morning for some reason. And then I'm like on the couch having coffee like forever. And so I'm not eating until 1030 or something. Late, yeah. yeah. And then several, you know, a lot of days I'm coming here at one, but I'm like not ready for lunch. Oh, but ox, yeah. yeah. But I'm always thinking about where my next meal is coming from and what it's going to be. This is true. Mm -hmm. This one, I can really stretch out. If, if where it meets, it's, it's wimpy looking, we can add a little bit of fiber to make it look nicer. <laughs> I'm going to have to go 
on this one. Sometimes I put white in the eye. I think in this case I'm going to leave them yellow. They usually do have yellow eyes, but I do need a little bit of fiber to fix my, where my double-decker tacos come together is not great. What's the weather like in Norway right now? Like, what's happening there seasonally? Is it warming up? Is it, like, is spring coming? Now I'm going to be worried about this person in Norway. <laughs> I'm um, enjoying my yard, like, you know, I feel very lucky to have that and not be, oh, yeah. not be in the city. I think Norway is, um, even in the summer, tends to not get super warm. My friends go there for a soccer tournament and they were not expecting as warm as it got. They had, oh, okay, like, good. I think a lot of places don't even have air conditioning and stuff because... Okay. Because it's generally not that warm. Typically, yeah. Typically, they don't need it. Their luggage also got lost. So she, oh, <laughs> she was no. working on, like, one pair of shorts. Oh, my God. One shirt. Renting stuff out in the hotel sink, you know. Uh, my fish is totally crazy. After we get all these parts on, then you can really kind of just, like, you know, Look at pictures and poke at them and give them all their character and glory. <laughs> What's going on? That's the way he looks right now. Their mouths are so funny. Their mouths are so funny. So now we can get into, I mean, sometimes I put different colors. Once I just keep it simple this time through, but once you make a few of these, you can experiment with different colors on these shapes. But um, if you kind of stick with a color while you're making the shapes, then when you do the belly and the fins and stuff, you can have go a little more crazy. So there's like calico ones and there's ones that are all gold. There's ones that are like, have like bright orange with white tips. Maybe I'll do that. I think I'll do the, um, the white and bright orange. So on the belly to cover up this little belly butt that we have under there, I'm going to get some, I'm going to put some white. You can use whatever you can use yellow. You can use orange. Does it matter else. on the eye ghost, on the eye double deck, double decker taco where it meets? I try to put it towards the back. I mean, you know, you don't want it like right up in the front. Right up front. Yeah. So I usually start mine centered on the front and then let it meet in the back. So this white I just stacked up, I'm just putting over the belly side to side to cover that belly crack. And I'm letting it go kind of up under the, the gill area. Norway is chilly. Yeah, rainy. yeah. It's like last I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, we have had such a mild winter and an early spring. And yesterday we had a, well, two days ago in the night, the cold front like came through with wind and everything and then yesterday we had like this like gusty snow it was awful oh my gosh the snow yesterday it just feels so much worse once it's been warm already you know yeah, i was out in shorts i think yeah. on what day is it saturday i think thursday i was outside with yeah. pair of shorts like comfortable yeah. so cover up your belly however whatever color you want Can you show the belly cover up close after you do it? Yes. 
just get it to where it's not wild. Ooh, a tutorial of a French bulldog face. Oh my gosh, that'd be fun all the Dogs, way. there are so many variations. That's why there's not dog tutorials, because it would be we'd have to do alone. We'd have to do every breed. Just the fibers going across, covering that um, that crack that was there. I'm stabbing this, whatever it is, in a little more. It's not quite so floppy. <laughs> okay. So I've done on the fins, I've done locks. I've done just, you know, just fiber. Um, I think I'm going to make this goldfish's two. These are probably what were called the pectoral fins, maybe. The two little ones down here. Um, I'm going to throw a little aqua and silk in here. So I have this silk. It's going to be very long. So I'm probably going to cut, just cut it. That's not similar. It would be fun to use um, silk ribbon and stuff, you know what I mean? Like I did on the hummingbird. I guess I put that away. I'll just do it regular. But, I mean, I love, I love using wacky stuff, so if you had yarn or, um, I don't know, anything out of the ordinary. Okay, so splitting this into two. And then to help my silk hold, I'm going to put a little bit of aqua colored fiber on it. I don't like that part. Let me find that part. This part. If you wet felt the fins, what's the best way to attach them? Um, if you wet felt the fins, you should be able to kind of Step brush on. it, brush it out a little to loosen up the fiber and then stab it on. So I'm going to sandwich the silk in there. If you don't have silk, just take um, some color that you want the fin to be and you're just making a little, um, a little triangle of it, all the fiber going the same way. I don't stab a shape to make these. I want it to be a little more... Um, what's the word, gossamer, then a, you know, a stabbed shape. So I'm just, I'm just lining up the fiber and letting the end stay a little bit frayed and loose and just the um, top part of it I'm felting to start to take some shape here. saying it takes 10 times as long as you to make the things you fly through. Any tips on how to get quicker? Just practice. Just practice. If you um, just becoming familiar with the shapes and the process, you'll just get faster and faster. Um, wrapping armatures is practice. You know, I can, I can wrap the armature pretty much all the wrapping with, with very little stabbing. So I don't stab as much. I, I've noticed that just that as I needle felted more and more, the amount of stabbing decline. Um, and I'm not, I, 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 could, I could probably slow down. Like I'm not um, a perfectionist and I sort of just, like it wouldn't be a bad thing for me to slow down a little bit. Um, so that's just me. I think I've gotten pretty used to trying to get a lot done, you know, so I'm, I don't linger on things. Okay, so now I want the pointy end to go down and the, you know, I can position this however I want it. If it's way too long, I could even cut this, but I kind of like that it's goofy long. So this is going on the side of the belly with the fringe pointing up. He 
He's very luxurious. <laughs> he doesn't know what he is yet. He's, like, he's like, I'm yellow, I'm white, I'm blue. And now I'm going to be orange. So there he is from the back. On the side. So once we get the side fins on, now we can put the top fin on. And for that, I'm going to use orange. Put a little bit of this orange silk in there. See what happens. I think, I think what I've done in the past is put it on from two sides. So take a section, put it on from one side sticking up. Off the top like so, and then do the other side. And then, like I said, I've, I've done this using locks or this has silk in it, and I've done it where I left it wild. I've, I've um, maybe I'll cut this one to make more of a um, specific fin shape. I'll show you. If you could show close up both the small fins and what you're doing, that would be good. Yeah. You tuck the lower fin under the gill, essentially. The lower fin mostly went up the... I had a lot of space on my belly. But yeah, it, okay. went, it went under the gill a little bit. In the, in the back of it. Yeah. And the upper fins are just coming off the, the belly, off the top. And then once you've got it on both sides, then you can kind of stab it together. What do you have in that color that you're calling turquoise? It definitely looks, um, someone said it looks light blue and it's coming yeah. across as much more. Yeah, it's a mix. It's something I had, um, if you guys can see it. Yeah, it's just, it's something I, I blended together for another class. So sometimes there I make them real blendy like um like I let all the fringe blend into each other especially if I'm going from orange to gold to yellow um in this case I think I want it to look a little more kind of calico like spotted <laughs> I'm laughing it our friend in Norway asked him for some thumbs ups. See. I think everybody's busy felting. That's my. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was at the space station and I am NASA space control. Who is? Somebody said it's um, the first time they've heard me talking to you without being in the same room. Uh -huh. It's like you're at the space station and I have NASA <laughs> space control. Definitely. That's funny. All right. So this top fin, I'm going to um, kind of stab together a little bit, and I'm going to try cutting it. Let's see how I like it.
Now I've got ground control and Major Tom on my head. <laughs> so it's longer at the front than the back. Oh, thanks. This is That's ground worthy, control. worthy of announcing on our Facebook Live tutorial. What? Uh, what? My dishwasher just got loaded without me asking. Oh, unloaded. so unloaded nice. Unloaded and loaded. Ooh, unloaded and loaded. That's exciting. So Thank now you. I'm, who's, who's the better child? I'm kind of wishing I did his eyes in orange, but I might add some orange to his face just to pull it, pull it together. So I cut his fin. He's got a nice, nice rock and a nice 50s pompadour. So on the lower fin, I'm going to go over this um, bottom tail wire, but I think I want to leave that separate, like as in two pieces, but then the top one I'm going to do um, in one in one piece. So I did it the opposite on this guy. I did the lower one in one piece, in other words, coming together on the other side of the wire. And the top one I left in two pieces, which I'm going to work on that a little bit. But so to to make it match, I'm going to do the lower part in the um, silk. Well, let me layer this up here with this. I don't know why I'm bothering with the silk in here. It just gets all covered up. I can't wait to see the goldfish. It was really fun seeing all the hummingbirds. ventral fins and then the pectorals are the ones just behind the gill on the side yeah like some fish knowledge here nice so I'm kind of like flat felting an eye shape like a you know like a big almond Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, okay. So we're going to revisit flowers, but if you wet felted some fine silk and like merino and stuff that you then incorporated into these goldfish, oh my gosh, so, it'd be so fun. Somebody fine. did silk, was it silk gauze? That, that had been, yeah. did you see that strong fanfare? Yeah. That was pretty. It was very pretty. All right, that's that's pretty good. So I want to get that centered, and then felt it to the yeah, the wrapped wire. But I'm not felting it to each other. I'm going to try and leave it kind of open. Like, let these be two separate things. These could be so involved, you know. We had a friend out in Tammy, out in, um, I think she was out. What's the island off of the West Coast, Northern West Coast? It might even be Canada. Um. Anyway, she, she made amazing goldfish. I haven't seen her stuff lately. Huh. And I'm then the top one I'm going to do in orange.
I'm not going to put silk in here. I would love to go there. Oh, yeah, there's some places up in Canada that look so pretty. I'm just saying what the projects are looking like. <laughs> I've seen zombie, I've seen unintentional pterodactyl. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Watch the goldfish tutorial and just do another because, I, you know, if you guys were here, I could... It could steer everybody straight. But they really are fun in their uncertainty. I, I find it. And same with the expression. There's not a big plan there. Workshop on Vancouver Island. Oh, yeah. I'll be there. Well, remember, like, way, way back, I was invited there, and then I couldn't find the invitation anymore. <laughs> they were going to pay, like, for me to go there. Some school. And then it just kind of fell apart, and it wasn't organized, and I didn't have the, um, like, the email or the information. So are you working out some seams or? I'm putting the tail on and I'm covering up some yellow spots that were yellow. How do I want this to go? I think I want it to go. I'm trying to decide how I want everything to go. Sometimes I point the, um, the tail fringe, I point them both out. And it can get trimmed as well. So I was just putting a little top coat on the side where he was yellow from my coral. It looks like two different fish. Poor guy. Yeah, he needs some love. <laughs> I think he needs maybe an orange stripe on his tail. I don't know what he needs. He definitely needs some orange on his face. So on the eyes, I have done a lot of different things. I have um, I've put a white eye. I like the way just a yellow eye looks, but he does need an eyeball. So with a little bit of black, we look at a goldfish pick. It's funny sometimes to make them like looking in different directions, but I'm gonna take a little bit of black. You can kind of start to bring it together in your fingers a little bit. And then Stab her on. I'm going to make this guy straightforward. He's just straightforward. You made these before, Kyla. Yep. I think we did the whole, we did pretty it. much the whole staff. Everybody did it. Some of them are still floating around here. Oh, someone said it's easy to see the parts with the different colors. Yay! Redeemed! <laughs> I, meant, I meant oh, to do that. 
So I'd like to do a tiny white dot in his eyes, just in the black, so that he looks shiny. I think my dude's going to get a little bit of color reworking here. I hope you guys made better color choices than I did. How do you stab the eyeballs, or where do you stab the eyeballs to prevent the wool from being pushed in and lost? If that happens, then just put more, make a new eyeball. So if your eyeball bump is disappearing, then just fold some yellow or white in your fingers and, and put a new, put a new eyeball. So he got his little, that happens sometimes. I, I've made, even, especially on like bigger, you know, more involved animals, I leave a spot for the eye and then. I go to stab the eye in and it just, um, it just kind of disappears. I want to look at a mouth and see what, exactly how I want this mouth to be. On this one, I put a little bit of like black in his mouth and I was trying to make him a little more kind of goldfish pucker kissy. This guy, I think I'm going more for the frown. Do you think there's a way to make one of those big bubble-eyed goldfish? Yeah, so do what we did when we made that eye bump. Um, but you could exaggerate that. So, I mean, he's this guy's got pretty big eyes. And I could even put another big another pillow here and have his eyes stick out even more yeah they look like big i'm trying to find one on my on my laptop they're so funny i wonder if they have a specific name black more goldfish is what someone said Could you explain how to make a mouth which looks more round, like it's a kissy fish? Well, you would have to, you would put a little black in the center and you would have to purse the lips and stab them the way you want it. I can't really, you could, if you didn't, if you really wanted them like kissy, you could take a double decker taco and that's your lips. So you really have that round, um, instead of making a top lip and a bottom lip, you, I think I've done that before. You do the whole thing out of a big du double decker taco. So it's like a great big, you know, circle. Am I explaining that well? I think so. Okay. So no two ghosts, you would do a big, a wider, bigger double decker taco. Yeah. Like the like around the eyes. Yeah. So that he's really got that pucker going. I'm blending a color to try to make my fish's face look a little bit more like it's a part of the rest of the fish. So just a little top coat work here. I think goldfish tend to almost always look grumpy. Like they don't smile. <laughs> I feel like Joyce would make a smiley goldfish if anybody would. I would like to see it. Her animals always look happy and friendly. Yeah, so, okay, so here he is just all yellow. And so I'm just putting a little blender to make him not quite so chopped up. But like I said, sometimes they are.
Oh man, I'm hungry now. I'm just thinking about what I'm gonna have for lunch. <laughs> Little tuna. Mmm, sardines. <laughs> I'll share the double decker taco mouth real quick because that's fun. Maybe I'll even put it on here. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Well, let me make it. All right, so I'm going to use yellow core because it's the closest thing I have. I need a bigger piece of that. So, this is instead of the two mouth pieces, you could do this. What needle did you use to get that um, blender top coat on the cheeks? I was just using my two, um, my pen holder, my pen tool with okay. two, two thirty eights, just tapping it, tapping it. All right, so just like the eye and upper lip double decker taco, except bigger. This might be too big. Oh well, we're just gonna try. Yeah, if you watch the goldfish tutorial, I might I might have made this a little too chunky. You know, I, I just kind of went through things differently in that, so you'll get a whole nother set of instruction and ideas and okay, so the idea here is when you fold this double decker taco around, you're going to get that real puckered up look. I love it when they have great big bellies. Hi, Sassy. Hello. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hi. Okay. All right. Good to see your face. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> She's got mask on. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, so here you can watch my my surgery here. I mean, I'm fine with this goldfish the way it is, but just to show you a different thing. All right, you don't like that anymore? Cut it off, right? Seam ripper. I know. Seam ripper would be good because then you wouldn't have a chunk. So now, so now, he's a faceless little disaster. And I'm going to firm this up a little bit more. Pull some of this core out of here. All right, there's no, I can't show you this part until I get it. until I get it on. Lucky, you're showing how to do circuitry. Yeah. Well, what kind of made me like, oh, this is what I'm going to do, is because now I'm getting more orange on his face. So the tricky thing with the double-decker taco like this is getting the two ends to come around and meet. Um, you know, you, you might have to do a little, a little extra piece to cover that seam. All right, so now he looks like um, some other kind of animal that has a long nose. <laughs> Not quite looking like goldfish yet. I think, you know, figuring out how far you can push the wool and manipulate it is a big part of learning. Okay, so this that's the way he looks right now, but I'm gonna keep messing with it and get it to look the way that I want it to look. And then I want a little bit of black in the center. Oh, 
he's funny. He's funny. Maybe a regular, just regular taco would have been good because this is a little thick. Okay. It looks good. <laughs> It's like people saying my hair looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Just it looks great. Just keep stabbing. <laughs> I'll fix it. I like the um that it's more orange at the lips, though. So. Yeah, yeah. It needed that. And I think he needs the orange. Mm. What did I do? Oh, that comes like that. I don't know. I don't know. He's not my favorite. Aw, I think he's cute. I'll keep messing with him, though. I don't like, I think... a little better. I like that better. He needed it. He needed his hair to be a little softened. Okay. <laughs> when you have the top fin go on either side of the blue. Yeah. That looks good too. It sort of okay. takes away the line a little bit. Okay. So let this. Like let it open and be on either yeah. side of the. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, he's getting, he's getting better. He's getting softened. I feel like either orange in the tail or blue in the top is gonna, is gonna help, help him. I couldn't even felt that close, I don't know. <sighs> Goldfish kissing, that's what I need to Google. Goldfish kissing. Cats and Jammer kids' hair. I don't know Cats and Jammer. Well, they actually kiss each other. Cats and Jammer? What's Cats and Jammer? I don't know. I'm just looking at goldfish. There's some... Oh. What are you talking about, Cats and Jammer? Someone said Cats and Jammer kids' hair. Oh, it looks like a cartoon. Oh, oh. All right, I just need to make his little kiss a little smaller, that's all. He's, looks like he's getting ready to suck up some. Cats and Jammer Kids. It's like a comic. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I like him a little more now. I'll just keep playing. He's cute. He looks good. Yeah. All right. I think I'm hungrier <laughs> than this will allow. Ah, okay, I'll have to look that up. <laughs> they just, they do make me smile. They're just funny. Oh, and we were saying in the video how well they launch. Like, if you throw them, they're like, well, they they're like torpedoes. So I think we should make up a game. There should be a goldfish game. We never did that. Like, are you knocking stuff down? No, are no, you it's like a party terrible? game. And maybe it's just like a great big cat face with their mouth open. Yeah. And you have to throw the goldfish in. Or you could just, like you could just hang a toilet bowl. Or you could just hang the seat. <laughs> The toilet like, seat. Like, take it off of your toilet and hang it up? You have an extra one. <laughs> I have an extra toilet seat? <laughs> no. I feel like that's something that's laying around. <laughs> My house? <laughs> no, not you specifically. Oh, at the shop. But Very you could get one. You could get one at Home Depot, and then when you have kids party, you hang the toilet seat, and you have to throw the goldfish to the toilet seat. That's my game idea. <laughs> you can use like a small hula hoop, goldfish cornhole, 
I know, but the toilet seat's funny. <laughs> Like they're dying in your flesh now? Yes. Andrew's beta fish just died. Aw. They're so pretty. Aw. Yeah. Uh, it lasted a long time, hundred plus. And they just wanna be they just wanna be left alone. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the goldfish game is. I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> Good deal. Alright. Thanks to you guys. Um Oh, someone's asked him about next week. I think the plan is one on Saturday again. Um, and I will make a post soon, hopefully sooner than later. Of um, It's also a kind of anything goes in terms of top coat colors. So look at some land snail pictures and kind of use your imagination. I really love like kind of wacky colors, but you could go earthy. Um, so some silk, you could do hankies, you could do um, merino wet felts well, top coats, bats, um, anything you might have left over if you had the hummingbird or the fox kit, those kinds of colors. And, and then really, it's just a core. So if you're going lighter, a lighter core, if you're going darker and your color is a darker core. And then once, so day one, the first Saturday, will wet felt, um, will wet felt the two pieces. And then the next week we will build the snail with the two pieces. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking. You know, this is just fun and free. And <laughs> kind of, a, um, you know, giving me something to do, that's for sure. So, but I think it'll be fun. And I think, um, you know, I love the snail project. But then when the snails were, I just didn't feel like it was quite special enough. So I think this will be, this will be really good. So thank you everybody for joining us today. Thank you, Kyla, for, sure. for being our, our DJ. Our DJ. <laughs> Your voice through the phone. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we'll see you soon and we'll be in touch soon no matter what so thank you everybody good to see everybody bye